Hi, I'm Zach, and I wanted to explain a little bit about some of the composites that we use in our 3D printing process, and kind of where that fits in the world and why, why it's uh, so unique. So uh, you hear a lot about composites and carbon fiber, and every time you say carbon fiber, you probably mean a composite, because here's a bunch of carbon fibers. Um, they're yarn, it's a uh, yarn like this. I can tie it in a knot, I can tie it in a bow, um, and each of these little individual carbon fibers are about five microns in diameter, but you can't make anything out of just carbon fiber. You almost always have to add some sort of a material that can hold all of these flimsy, flexible, but very strong in tension carbon fibers in position. And that would be the matrix material, which is the polymer component of the composite. Um, most composite in the world, and indeed like almost all composite bikes, for example, are a thermosetting composite, which means that they have some sort of a liquid thermoset resin. This is like uh, the epoxy that you get at the hardware store. Normally there's a couple components that you mix together and you'd infuse it around each and every one of these carbon fibers. So, and then that would, uh, the glue would harden and that would be your composite. Arivo does something a little different. We use a thermoplastic which is typically in either a powder or a pelletized form like this. And we uh, work very carefully to infuse this powder around each of those carbon fibers in a very similar way to the thermoset as well. Some of the advantages to the thermoplastic though is that it's compatible with 3D printing. And that's really what uh, allows us to do additive manufacturing of composites as opposed to being restricted to thermoset resins that maybe aren't compatible with quick cure times or are limited to, um, I'll say exotic or different uh, curing methods like snap curable UV thermosets or something like that, that you would need in order to do in a, a true additive manufacturing process. So we take our thermoplastic powder and our carbon fiber and we turn it into a prepreg or a, uh, a filament like this. And this is an example of some of the raw material that would go into our printers. And so now I've taken that same yarn of carbon fiber and I've encapsulated it in plastic, and now suddenly it's strong and it's uh, structural. It has a little bit of bending strength to it. The tensile strength is the same as the fiber before. The bending strength now, where before it was just the carbon fibers, which were all floppy, now are strengthened by that polymer. So now I have, uh, are able to share a load between all of those carbon fibers, and now I actually have something I can make a structure out of. Feed this into our 3D printer, and then uh, you can make a bike, you can make a scooter, you can make whatever you like. Um, and all because we have the combination of these two materials. Contrast that with um, a traditional uh, manufacturing process, which might use something like a metal. You know, like here's a chunk of aluminum, a little bit, a little dirty. But um, this is what's known as an isotropic material in that it doesn't matter whether I pull on this piece like this, or like this, or like this. Um, however I choose to load this, it has the same properties regardless of the direction of load application. Contrast that with this filament, which is what we make our uh, composite structures out of. It's incredibly strong in tension and very strong in compression as well. Not so bad in uh, stiffness, um, strength to weight, weight compared to many other materials. It still comes out on top. And um, so, but it's fiber dominated when I pull or push on the uh, filament here, but if I were to try to split this filament in half, that's actually, I'm mostly pulling on plastic. I'm pulling on the other part of the composite. So it's plastic-like strength in some directions, carbon-like strength in other directions, and kind of a mix of some others in, in other directions. And that's why kind of composites are complicated. That's why you need fancy software and uh, talented engineers to, to figure it out. But so we take our filament now and we turn it into structures. This is a test coupon. I'm in our materials test lab right now. So this is a bunch of filaments, all in different orientations, so that we can get a certain strength. We can get um, some fibers going in, in this direction to get strength in that direction, this direction to get strength in that direction. They share load between the two of them so that then when we break this, we can uh, measure how strong they are together when we have a bunch of different fiber orientations. And that's kind of the trick of composites is to orient fibers in many different directions to self to reinforce each other. And then you end up with something that is stronger than the sum of its par parts. I can take that, I can make other test coupons. 
And this is just a bunch of plastic and carbon fiber, but carbon fiber in exactly the right place. And that's as dictated by our design software that helps to figure out for a given load case, let's say this part is going to get bent like this, I might orient fibers differently than if it was going to be bent or pulled apart like this. And if you take all of the software together and you have a, then have a, tells you where all your fibers need to go and you have a robot that allows you to place fibers in whatever orientation you want. And you have a additive manufacturing process that can build up structures as you go, as opposed to using a liquid thermoset, which might take hours or days or even weeks to fully cure. Um, now you have a rapid process that can make real structural parts that have strong strength relative to the world strength that is meaningful to things that you interact with in your daily life. And you can make them very fast. That's really the magic of additive manufacturing of composites. Thank <laughs> you.